So continuing on now with our journey through the nose, we are now going to enter the pharynx. Now, what the pharynx does is it essentially connects the nasal cavity and the back of your throat down to the esophagus. And it's primarily broken down into three main sections. We have the nasopharynx, we have the oropharynx, and we have the laryngeopharynx. Now, these are quite sequential in terms of their structure. So the nasopharynx is basically directly behind your nose. So if you put your finger on your nose and go straight back, that is your nasopharynx. The oropharynx is basically the very back of your throat and the laryngeopharynx is sort of down the bottom here. Now, what is quite interesting here when we look at these three main sections of the pharynx is that the tissue type actually changes. When we were looking at the nasal cavity there, that it was made up of pseudostratified columnar epithelial tissue. And that is indeed true. And we see that with our nasopharynx. But as we move down to the oropharynx, which is basically directly behind your mouth, the tissue type has now changed to a stratified squamous epithelium. Now again, why is that? Why does the tissue type change? Remember, structure equals function. And what is important here with our stratified squamous epithelial cells is that they are primarily responsible for protection. This is why, as an example, our skin is stratified squamous. Because if I scratch my arm, it's not like I'm going to just shred my skin apart. I'm sort of shredding the, the outermost layers. And we see that with the oropharynx as well, because not only is this pathway used for breathing, it's also responsible for eating. So what we're seeing is, is that these chewed foods are constantly being brushed up and are uh, there's a constant abrasion happening there. So the stratified squamous epithelium is to help protect your, your throat from this. And I'm sure we've all done this where you've eaten, say, uh, some Doritos and you've eaten them a bit too quickly and you felt it like scratching your throat. You're like, oh, that's your stratified squamous epithelial sort of saving you there. This is also why if you're, say, having a drink of soft drink and your friend makes you laugh and you laugh and cough it out your nose, it burns like hell because that is not stratified squamous epithelial tissue. That is just pseudostratified columnar epithelial tissue and it is not as protective. So as we move down from our oropharynx and down to our laryngeopharynx, the laryngeopharynx is like the beginning of the official airway, I guess you would say. And it's more so the separation from the esophagus to the larynx and eventually the, the trachea, which is, our, which is our airway here. Now our laryngeopharynx will then connect to the larynx and a good sort of way to indicate or to find where the larynx is, it's essentially where the voice box is. So if you look for the, the Adam's apple, which is obviously more pronounced in, in males, that is your larynx. Now the primary function here of the larynx, as I said earlier, is the separation of food and air. Air can go in the stomach, that's fine within a reasonable amount, you'll just burp. Food cannot go in the lungs. That is insanely bad. And we want to try and prevent the entry of food into the lungs as much as possible. And there is a key structure here that helps with this, and that is the epiglottis. And the epiglottis is kind of like a leaf-like structure. And what it does is when you are swallowing food, so if you take a big drink of water and you swallow that down into your stomach, you cannot breathe during that process. And that's critical because what has happened there is that that epiglottis has closed. It's kind of like a trap door. And by closing, it prevents the movement of that water or food or whatever it is to move into your lungs. Now, another thing too, when we are looking at our larynx and moving down further into our trachea is the presence of cartilage. And what is also important here is our cricoid cartilage. Now, the purpose of this cartilage is that it is rigid, it's quite strong, and it's to help keep that windpipe open at all costs. So just to qu very quickly recap, we've covered our uh, nostril and our nasal cavity. The air that we're breathing in will then move through into our nasopharynx. We've then got our oropharynx and we've got our laryngeopharynx down here. And then the air is going to move from the laryngeopharynx into our trachea here. So in our journey, we're about here. Now, looking at our larynx, there is a key ligament here, and that's our cricothyroid ligament. 
In the event that someone is choking or their airways have completely collapsed and they are unable to, to breathe at all, an emergency procedure that can be performed is called a tracheotomy. And what this essentially is, is the creation of an emergency airway. So by creating a small incision, you can insert a pipe to help the patient breathe. Unfortunately, sometimes the awful side effect of that is permanent damage to the vocal cords because it is in the larynx that we do see those vocal cords. And if in that emergency situation, the cut is made slightly too high, we can get damage to those vocal cords, unfortunately. So that covers the pharynx and the larynx. In the next video, what we're going to be doing is continuing on with our journey and looking at our trachea and bronchioles.